aspects of our lives. The first reading is from St. James. It is part of the New Testament wisdom literature. Wisdom literature was a history and a, a historical type of literature in the Old Testament as well as New Testament in which basic information of life was put forth as a way of living, wisdom, but in the context of faith. Wisdom literature in the Old Testament started in Hellenistic territories, which were Greek territories after the, the end of the Palestinian cohort community, and they spread throughout the known world. And the, the authors, about 100 years before Christ, took the practical literature of the day, the Greek wisdom, and applied scripture to it, and applied the, the foundation, and I mentioned this on Sunday as well, the foundation of wisdom wasn't here, but there. It wasn't our own wisdom, it was our understanding of God's wisdom, and God is wisdom. So to the degree that we act correctly and do what is right, we're reflecting God. In the Greek idea, you're reflecting yourself. Man is the center of creation, no problem. They were pagans, that's, that's their belief system. But when the Jews take that, they apply it to the wisdom of knowing yourself, and the more you know yourself, the better you should know God. Now, right out of that tradition comes St. James. And it, this is very funny because um, when we're tempted, I don't know what you're tempted to do. I mean, everybody here is different, and different things may tempt you. Uh, Greed may tempt you, sex may tempt you, uh, gossip may tempt you, okay. There was a, an, uh, a comedian from Jersey City, of all places, where I'm from, in New Jersey, and he, his name was Flip Wilson. Anybody here hear of Flip Wilson? Yeah. One guy, yeah, two, okay, now yeah, something, okay. Well, there's one phrase I want to give you that Flip Wilson used, used to say. When, when he would look at pretty girls, his, 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 his girlfriend or his wife would criticize him, and he'd say, the devil made me do it. Well, and that became like the phrase, the devil made me do it. Well, the scriptures today is saying, you know what? It is the devil that made you do it, whatever the temptation is. Because people say, oh, God led me to temptation. We even say that in the Lord's Prayer, lead me not to temptation. What? Does God push us toward temptation? No. God is a source of good, and God who is good can't do bad. It's, it's, it's incomprehensible. So when we are tempted, yeah, it's our will, our weakness, and there's always a secondary gain. You know, you gossip because you feel better about yourself, because you're not as bad as she is or he is. Or you're envious because they don't really deserve what they have. You know what it is. I mean, it's it's re re revealing our own low self-image when we gossip, when we when we give in to temptation, because we try to build ourselves up by pushing another person down. We do that racially. I look around; it's, everybody's white. Here. I mean, God bless you, as you are, but you know, in our society, we're a mixed culture, and so often in our society. Up north, I know it's the truth. It's probably the truth down here, too. You put people of other racial denominations down. They have an accent. They have oriental eyes. They speak with uh, an Italian uh, verbiage or an Irish brogue or this or that. They're not as good as me. Who said? We're all made in the image of God. And he is the source of life and the source of wisdom. And if I look at other people, whether they are richer or poorer, heavier or skinnier, more beautiful or uglier than me, all made in the image of God. If I look to the eyes of faith, when I am living in the world out there and deal with people through the eyes of faith, I can only accept one another. We can only accept and love one another as God loves us. He doesn't say to any of us because you're ugly, you've been cursed, or you're rich, so you've been cursed, or you're poor, so you've been cursed. And that's what the Book of Wisdom says, no. Don't be tempted. Don't think the situation you're in, God put you in. 
No. You're in, we are inclined to do evil because it reflects evil. James says, when you say, I am, be I am being tempted by God, for God is not the subject to temptation or evil, and he himself tempts no one. So we look into ourselves, through the book of wisdom, and the understanding of our heads and hearts, we realize, when I'm putting someone else down, when I'm envious of somebody, when I'm greedy, when I'm lustful, when I, and the list can go on, I should look at myself. Because I'm revealing my weakness. I'm revealing my low self-image. And in the process of doing that, I'm disgracing God. Because we're made in the image of God. He loves every one of us. And he wants us to appreciate who we are. He wants us to appreciate the, the goodness that we have and the goodness that we have been revealed to receive in the Eucharist and in the Word. And that takes time. And when we don't do it, we're being tempted by the devil. Whenever we pull away from what is good and right and just, we're being tempted by the devil. And we're joining forces with the devil. Jesus comes to us to bring divinity into our humanity and joins forces with us and expects us to accept our lovingness, our beauty, our acceptance before him as he accepts us. When the, when the apostles misunderstood Jesus, he didn't say, you idiots. He said, listen, I did this, I did this, I made 4,000... 4,000 people like, ate of a few pieces of fish, and then another 5,000 ate from a few pieces of bread, and you don't understand? Work on it. <laughs> Work on it. Work on understanding more and more God's way in my life. He said it to the apostles 2,000 years ago, and he says it to us. Work on it. Appreciate the wisdom that God has given us. Appreciate the faith that God has given us and work on it. So when we leave here today, we're a little wiser and a little kinder and a little more respectful in imitation of no one other than Jesus Christ.